Hey guys, I just released a website that is geared to help players improve at a fundamental level, no matter what skill level you're at right now. It has a constantly updated meta report with early game boards, rising comps, and thorough explanations of each comp. The website also has a guide section for fundamentals to help improve and understand the game intuitively, no matter what set it is. And there's also various forms of coaching, including free group coaching, individual paid coaching, and a boot camp to help take your game to the next level. Join my Discord to learn more. Yo, what's up guys? Uh, Voice in back again. This time I'm here to give you guys alternatives to reveal comps because I'm pretty sure everyone, you know, everyone's spamming reveal comps right now. Maybe you're tired of it, maybe you're not. Uh, I'm here to give you something else to play if you want. And it's not just comps that exist, it's also comps that's good. So let's get right into it. The first one that you may or may not know, but it's getting really, really popular in Challenger is the Karma Warriors comp. So instead of like Callista, which is more reliant on the Rage Blade, the Last Whisper, the good thing about Karma Warriors is it's really item flexible, right? So Callista, you need only 80 items. Yeah, you can play Gwen actually in that. So it's still good, but Karma is a bit more popular because you're more flexible with your items, right? You don't really need the Rage Blade on the Callista, right? The blue buff, it's nice, but you can also do Shoujin, right? Instead of uh, Morello, you can also do Red Buff, right? In the Static Shiv, you could be an AP item and then you do an Ionic Spark on Gwen or Ness. This right so the item flexibility of this comp is it's strong suit so that way you're not really punished for playing aggressively and slamming items as you want you know so you keep your hp high at all points of the game slam items play strongest board um and then play into this level eight and it's really really nice transition but the drawback of this is that because there's five four costs and if you want to upgrade all of them right it's a lot a lot of gold right because it takes what 40 gold just to upgrade them by themselves right so it's like all right then right it's a lot and because you know like sometimes you can just miss your level 8 roll down it's imperative that you keep your hp high if possible unless you have like say 80 gold to roll at level 8 then you can you know kind of sack the early game and just go for the big big roll down but if you're poor and your hp is low maybe consider playing something else right because it's you it needs a lot for this like i said flexibility is a strong suit a challenger player really love consistency i love consistency so you know a comp like sugar craft is less consistent because you need the emblem whereas this you could play this every game it's like literally every game if you wanted to and this will teach you important econ management and you know spots to play this right so in the diagram here this is to show a realistic level eight board right because you don't have the briar you don't have the morgue but say you hit Morgue at level 8, you just drop Nico and put in 4 Preserver because 4 Preserver Spike is really nice. Or you can drop, let's say, Bard. And if you hit both, you can drop maybe Bard for Briar, Zillion for Briar, you know. But obviously your level 9 is going to be Briar and Morgue, so you don't play Nico. Solid, solid comp. Good for top 4. Can win out if you high roll. So if you're tired of playing rerolled, I think this is the number one option you should try to play for before it gets really popular. Because right now, I think challenger players play this a lot. Like there's two to three players every game, but that's because including me, because I'm trying to play it. But <laughs> maybe you can get some LP with this. For this comp, I gave you guys an early game opener just to demonstrate how you would play aggressively, how you would slam items, right? So Seraphine, really good right now, paired with Lilia. Really good opener if you have AP items, right? So you notice, I put Shoujin here instead of blue buff. Why? It's because realistically, you're not getting two tiers in stage two or stage three. Maybe you can if you're loose streaking, but say you're wind streaking with this, you're slamming the Shoujin, moving on, right? This Morello, it could be red buff if you somehow get two bows, right? It could be like death cap if you just want to slam for AP items, right? It could be static shiv. It, there's a lot, a lot of different options. And Poppy here is used to demonstrate how we would hold both Fiora and Gwen items, right? Because the BT and the Starix Gauge uh, probably go on Fiora, right? And then the Ionic Spark can go on Gwen. So, and you could put these poppy items on Lilia if you have a Lilia too, right? It doesn't really matter. Just uh, any frontline bruiser unit, just throw it on them, right? So this is an example. As long as your items are like this, you can fit it in any type of opener. This is just one example. And obviously, Augment's here. Freaky Friday, really good because it's good on both Fiora and Gwen, and it's good early game. So you're keeping that early game tempo. You're having a stage three spike with two infinity forces. And then your late game, you have perfect users of this. So it helps you at all points of the game. Giant and Mighty, it's just, it's decent in general. Um, obviously, it's better than stuff like Shapeshifter or like really high 
high HP units, but because you have multiple melee units who really benefit from the survivability, Giant and Mighty is really good because it helps keep your bruiser units alive, right? So it's a very good uh, flex augment. Bury treasures, right? This comp wants a lot of items. Three item Gwen, three item uh, Fiora, three item Karma, and some tank items for your frontliner. So Bury treasures is just an option. It obviously is better at 2-1 though than 3-2. But if you have no choice, you could consider taking it at 3-2. Um, Raining gold, big grab bag, right? Raining gold helps with the gold situation and hitting all your units, right? Um, this could be any kind of utility augment that helps you get to 8 or just helps you uh, save gold slash XP, right? Big grab bag, self-explanatory, extra items, more carry items, more tank items. Inspiring Epitaph, just one of the better scaling flex augments because, right, it benefits Gwen, Fiora, helps them keep them alive. It's just if you want to play flex and you're trying to go for level 8, 9, even 10, one of the better options late game. Risky moves, self-explanatory, a lot of gold. Overcovered, more items. Spoils of War, if you have a strong early game and you just push tempo with this, or you keep your HP high and then you get the extra gold and sometimes dupes, maybe even an item from this late game, right? So this is just good to play aggressive, teach you how to play aggressive. But I would only take this if you have a strong opener with upgrades and items, right? So definitely check out Karma Warriors. Is it broken? No. But is it consistent? Decent? Yeah. That's why it's an S minus. Well, the next comp that we're going to talk about is Sugarcraft. So I mentioned Sugarcraft, um, I mean Sugarcraft is just good right now with the Gwen buffs, everything else getting nerfed, right? It was already good last patch when you got the emblem, right? The issue is you really want the emblem because if you don't, um, you can't even play 6 Sugarcraft, which is where it actually really spikes at 8, right? So if you get the option for emblem, this also has the benefit of Karma in the sense that it can use various items. AP items goes on Gwen, 80 items goes on Fiora slash Jinx, tank items, Tom Kench. But you, you just slam items aggressively as you go, keep your HP high. A, a big mistake that players make is that they treat this as if it's Jinx Wukong reroll at 7. You don't want to just hit 7 because you want to go for the 6 sugar craft spike with all the 4 costs. That the strength of the comp lies in 2 star Gwen, Fiora, and Olaf. So then you just have items on 2 star Jinx instead. And if you get like a lot of jinxes then yeah like you can go for jinx 3 but it's definitely not even close to the main priority right tag items goes on tom kench obviously later on at level 8 you can just add in stuff like morgue diana to like really cap out even a random briar right you add those so like i said augments that helps a lot is just additional sugar craft and then once you get the additional sugar craft you really want stuff that's like items right because obviously sugar craft scales off the items Again, Freaky Friday is really good for this comp because a lot of users for it. Olaf, Gwen, Fiora, right? Good. Two Infinity Forces is no joke. Blinding Speed is good if you don't have Jinx items, right? So you can just you just get free Jinx items for fun. And five components. That is a lot of Sugarcraft stacking value. And a big red bag. Self-explanatory. This comp is very strong. If you can consistently get an item, it would definitely be S tier. Consistently get an emblem, not an item, but you can't. So it's conditional, right? But it definitely has a high cap potential especially if you hit that giant pancake monster the 2200 2300 stack that pancake is 1v9 the third comp is another conditional emblem comp and that is that is frost i'm sure we all know frost can you place every game especially without emblem no that is not even close no but if you get a frost emblem definitely could win the game if you can go nine but it also has a decent level eight spike if you get like a frost opener and have frost units i would definitely consider taking the frost angle playing it All right it has a benefit of having multiple carries of different damage type so Huey can use ap items diana can use it um olaf can use ad bruiser items uh varus can use ad artillery items and then that's this obviously tank so it's good for tempo and it's another comp you kind of just want to slam stuff and just get your free top four if you get the emblem or there's like one of the broken augments like frosty frontline not much to say here the, the spike comes in at seven frost so you have to reach level eight right roll down for the various two nessus two if you don't right you can just play like preservers until you can get seven frost but because it's so reliant on the plus one emblem and it, it's not i don't think it's necessarily as strong as a capped sugarcraft board it is strong though and if you really want to win out you're gated by level nine because you want to get the diana to even smolder to replace varus briar so like even just random camille 
right so like if you want to win the game it's relying on five costs right so it is strong though just want to show you a sample opener for this comp right everyone knows like you can carry either twitch or nomzy for the 80 items and since they got buffed right they're actually pretty strong now early game they're decent so then if you get the five frost online with the rumble upgrade the units definitely can is no joke and you can win streak early in mid game with it and then have a, a solid transition to level eight definitely would be more inclined to take this if you already were holding frost units in stage one say you get a frost emblem 2-1 and you have no frost units I don't really like just playing loose streak into this because unless you high roll really really hard it's hard for you to get like top two just from a level eight roll down so it's, it's a little conditional i would just take this if i had already been holding like pairs of frost units like i said it's not just the frost emblems that are good it's also frosty frontline because you get a free eternal winter it's gonna be used good at all points in the game so that's frost Let's go on to number four. This one doesn't need emblems. And at the start of the patch, it was decent before Karma started emerging. Um, but now it's it's fallen off a bit. It's Shapeshifter Blaster. Okay, like six Shapeshifter and then you play Virus Smolder Duo in the back. Why is this good? It's because Shapeshifter got buffed. Nomzy Twitch got buffed. So the opener is pretty damn good. If you just play that stage threes and then transition on stage four. Really simple to play. It's early game obviously got buffed with the unit buffs but you know the issue with this cop is it's, it's gated by smolder and briar so if you want to win the game get top two you really need upgraded smolder and briar with items so it has a high cap potential but it's not consistent right because with this right because it's reliant on five costs most likely you're gonna have to reach level nine unless you high roll really hard at eight consistency wise not as reliable as karma who stabilizes all four costs more all right obviously it still uses five costs but they're not the main stars where at this comp they're kind of the main stars to be honest so yeah because of this you kind of want either insane tempo right so you get the nom ct twitch 2 for shape level 6 win streak entire game go 9 afk get your upgrades go next and win the game right or you want insane econ so in the form of like i'll say something like hedge fund level up even something like slamming raining gold uh patient study but i think the prismatic versions are better especially hedge funds hedge fund because it gives you so much raw econ that you don't necessarily need to win streak to get to nine and you can just sack stage two and even three and just go for the biggest level nine roll down of your life right so it's pretty good um obviously giant and mighty is good because you're playing around shapeshifters shapeshifters like this augment because you know they, they like hp if you have an insane opener for this and you're playing ad and you're holding shapeshifters i would definitely consider this angle right but again it's gated by its need to go nine to do really really well so number five and i love this for number five because we already know what the comp is everyone knows it we've all played it we've all seen it it's portal Woo, portal so portal's still good but again its issue is that it's also reliant on a portal spat portal emblem so you don't need it if you have little buddies you can play whatever you want um and, and get top two with this version you don't even need to play eight portal if you want a top two reliably with this comp you need a portal plus one and even then you not only need that you need to high roll like Zerath two nora two diana two at nine if you want to just win out you know but solid level eight spike with eight portal if you get the emblem self-explanatory strong at decent at all points of the game if you have upgrades item wise the items here are actually not ideal i would say i have to update this right but i think i would replace like either shoujin or rage blade with like red buff he really likes red buff because he's a really good player of anti-heal if not morello right just one of these items you want archangel for the scaling damage he really likes archangel but you can't really just read you just slam whatever you want anti-heal one generating item and then the ap item right here's an opener i'm sure we all know this but it's like zoe jay scalio nico right Sometimes if you don't get this, you can play around uh, Kassadin for three portal, right? Ari for Scholar, Zoe generally ha uh, carries the AP items, Ari can car carry it as well. Self-explanatory, the whole goal of this video is to show you that I think the meta actually is somewhat shifting to like say 50-50 reroll and 4 cost or like 60% reroll and 40% 4 cost. 
It's, it's definitely not as re-rolly as last patch, but there's definitely still a lot of high cap re-roll comps. If you wanted to see the other re-roll comps, check out my meta report. Right, did I've added some like sleeper ones like Cassie Pierre reroll and yeah, I, I constantly update this tier list as I go. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, uh, leave a comment if you like the video. Hopefully it's helpful. Also join my Discord if you want coaching. I do free group coaching once a week. All right, see you guys.